about is series and summation notation. So again, suppose a person has a starting salary of $30,000 and receives a $2,000 raise each year. Then the sequence of their pay for five years would be $30,000, $32,000, $34,000, $36,000, are the terms of their sequence over that five-year period. So if we want to find their total earnings, we'll call that a finite series, finite because it's ending at five, now we add those all up. So this is a sequence. That's your list. Then a sequence becomes a series once we start adding them together. So the sum of the five-year pay would be $170,000. All right. So the difference between the two. The sum of the terms of a sequence is called a series and is written using summation notation. It uses the capital Greek letter sigma. Well, there's two notations. I've always believed that the capital S sub N represents a series that's finite and can end. And then that is the same summation notation, sigma, I equals 1 to N of A sub I, your sequence function, finding these individual terms. We can have an infinite series. So that's S sub infinity. Now we're going to add out to an infinite number of terms. Well, okay, don't think that we're going to do that and never end. It will be series that will converge that we can add together. And your summation notation will have infinity as its upper limit. Now the I is your index here. Now, if I throws you off, making you think it's an imaginary number, then I like to use K or a J, something completely different. But <clears throat> the reason for two different notations is if this said S sub 15, that's called the 15th partial sum, starting with the first term up to 15. So whenever you use capital S, you're always starting with A sub 1. Now with summation notation, your sigma notation, you don't have to start with a 1. I could say, well, what's the sum from the 6th term to the 15th term? I'm allowed to change my starting value here. Whereas in this notation, you can't see the indication of changing the starting number. So with capital S, you always start with n equals 1, the first term. With summation notation, you have the ability to change where you want to start at. All right, example time. Evaluate this summation. We're going from 1 to 6 of 2K plus 1. So this whole thing right here is a term. So when K is equal to 1, we're going to write it in parentheses, 2 to the first plus 1. Now, if you want to crunch that out, that's 2 to the first is 2 plus 1. You can put a 3 underneath it. So I'm going to write out each individual term, then calculate it out as we go. When k is 2, now my term is 2 squared plus 1 in parentheses. All right, 2 squared is 4 plus 1. I'm going to add a 5. My third term, when k is 3, that will be plus 2 to the third plus 1 as my term. Okay, 2 to the third is 8 plus 1, that's plus 9. My next term is when k is to the is 4, so plus in parentheses, 2 to the fourth plus 1. Well, 2 to the fourth is 16 plus 1, plus 17. Then plus, when k is 5, the binomial, 2 to the fifth plus 1. So let's see, 2 to the fifth is 32 plus 1, that's 33. And then finally, plus 2 to the sixth plus 1. Uh, 64 plus 1 is 65. Then we'll add them together. The 5 and the 65, that's a 70. The 17 and the 33, that would be, what, 50? So 70 plus 50 is 120, 129. 132 is my sum. All right, example 4, part A. It says write out the terms of each series and, if possible, evaluate each sum. So now you can see here we're starting at 3 and not a 1. So we're going to have j is 3, 4, 5, and 6. We're going to put that in for j. So we're going to have 
a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 5 plus a sub 6. They didn't tell us anything about what the a sub n function is or a sub j function. So we'll just leave it at that. We just listed the terms. We can't do anything more to evaluate. <clears throat> Part B. Summation from i, I equals 1 to 3. 6x sub i. So we're going to be changing that subscript. Then we're going to subtract 2. And then it says if x sub 1 is 2, x sub 2 is 4, and x sub 3 is 6. Okay, they're giving us the values. So I list my terms. 6 x sub 1 minus 2 plus 6x sub 2 minus 2 plus 6x sub 3 minus 2. Substitute in the 2, the 4, and the 6. And now crunch the num numbers. Now we can evaluate if it is possible. So 12 minus 2 is 10. 24 minus 2 is 22. 36 minus 2 is 34. Uh, that adds up to be 66. Part C, all right, we got all kinds of crazy notation here. We have the summation from one to four, f of x sub i, so we'll be changing this, times delta x, that's your change in x, that's just the variable. If f of x is equal to x squared, okay, there's my function, and then x sub one is zero, x sub two is two, x sub three is four, x sub six is six, and delta x is two. So I'm just going to put in my i's and make those changes right now. So f of x sub 1 times delta x plus f of x sub 2 times delta x plus f of x sub 3 times delta x plus f of x sub 4 delta x. All right, so now it's time to put some numbers in. x sub 1 is 0, delta x is 2. So all these delta x's are going to be a 2. And this will be f of x sub 1 will now be f of 0 times 2. And see, x sub 2 will be 2, so this is plus f of 2 times 2. And then x sub 3 is 4, f of 4 times 2. And finally, f of 6 times 2. Now, to evaluate these functions, take 0, and let's go put it into the f of x function, which is x squared. 0 squared, well, okay, that's 0, so 0 times 2, that's a 0. 2 being squared will be a 4, so that's plus 4 times 2. 4 squared, that will make it 16 times 2. 6 squared, 36 times 2. So that's a 0 plus an 8 plus a 32 plus a 72. Uh, looks like we get 112 here. Now, for all these examples, notice our upper limit was very small because... These are things I'm going to ask you to list out the terms to make sure you understand the definition of summations. Well, what happens well, when we get some really big upper limits? Well, we have some properties that we want to use. The a sub i and b sub i's are going to represent sequence functions, a sub n, b sub n. c is going to represent a constant. Your n will be positive integers as normal. Our first summation property says that if you have a summation with just a constant, there's no i, no index, no counter, then that means you're just adding that constant number over and over and over again, which is the definition of multiplication. Take the upper limit n, multiply it to c, that's your sum. b states that if you have a constant being multiplied to your function, it's smarter to factor it out as the GCF. So instead of multiplying things together and making them bigger than adding, why don't you add the smaller numbers together, then multiply it by c, you still get the same sum. That kind of happened right here. Our delta x was being multiplied to everything. We could have factored it out to the front first. So put a 2 out and then find, okay, 0 plus 4 plus 16, that's 20 plus 36, that's 56, and then take the 56 and multiply it by 2, you still get 112. C and D are kind of the same. If you're adding or subtracting our two sequence functions, we're going to separate them into two summations. If it's a plus, we'll add them. If it's a minus, we'll subtract them. These three here are just as important as this first one in terms of finding the sum. 
If you have your index i or k or x, whatever you want it to be, to the first power, that's linear. You're going to be going 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 out to n. Well, if that was, say, out to 100, that's a lot of adding to do. A formula to add up all those numbers is n times n plus 1 over 2. For our summation with i squared, now we have a formula for that, but it's a little bit messy. Don't panic. We're looking at 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. And we have a formula for that which says n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Now, again, we're going to have to memorize this. So to be honest, this is the only one I've memorized. I use this one to build this one. And how do I build my second binomial? I'll say I have two n's, that's 2n, and 1, 1, so plus 1. That gives me three factors on top times my 2 gives me 6 on the bottom. Now, the next one I do not like, so I'm going to give you an alternative definition to write this. I think it's easier because it helps with the multiplication process. So I'm getting my, here it comes, I'm getting my error server to show up. What I would do for this last one, I would use this formula. I would say n times n plus 1 all over 2 squared. Because now this matches what you have right here. So this first formula I used to build these other two. Come on, mouse. So my two n's give me the two n and then the plus one, all over six, three factors times two. Then for the third one, it's the n times n plus one all over two. All I have to do is square it. So this is the one I'm going to use down here. So if you want to attach equals and put this right next to it, this is the one I encourage you to use. So these are formulas that help us find the sums of these linear, quadratic, and cubic sequence functions. Now, another quick note so you know which one's which. If it's i to the first, you have two n's in your factors. I squared, there's three n's. Whatever the power is, you have to have plus one of that power n's. I to the third, okay, four n's. One, two, three, four, I'm squaring it. Or n, and n plus one is two, then you square it, you get four n's. All right, so let's use these examples here. <clears throat> Here we have the summation of i equals 1 to 40 of just the constant 5. That's this property, 40 times 5, 200. Done. B, here you have a 2 being multiplied to i to the first, so it would be smart to factor out the 2 to the front of your summation. Now that's i to the first, so that's my n times n plus 1 all over 2. So wherever you see the ends, you put a 22 to replace this summation. So 2 times the brackets, 22 times the 22 plus 1, which this will be 23. Now this 2 has to reduce with one of these two factors. You will always have one even and one odd, or one odd, one even. But the 2 will reduce into the 22, making it 11. And now you go to the calculator and just multiply these three numbers together to get 506. All right, C, the summation of i equals 1 to 14, 2i squared minus 3. Two terms, two summations. Factor the 2 out when you rewrite this one. i squared minus, okay, here is the constant. <clears throat> so your i squared, that's the n times n minus 1 times 2n, excuse me, n times n plus 1, then 2n plus 1 all over 6. So combine this, that's 15, 28, plus 1 is 29, there's my numbers. 
Then lastly, that constant, 14 times 3, and that's going to be a subtraction. Now, with the 6 in the denominator, that has to reduce. So you're going to have one even number, one number that's a multiple of 3, or you'll have a number that's a multiple of 6 to reduce it in. You will always have something to reduce. So the 2 goes into the 14 7 times. The 3 goes into 15 5 times. Those are the two factors of my 6. So now I can go 2 times 7 times 5 times 29 minus 14 times 3, that's 42. Or if you want to go 7 times 5, make this a 35. Whatever you mentally want to do, go ahead and calculate it out. But you should get 1,988. Another thing that I would recommend that you do to make sure you're doing this right, again, grab your calculator. Where's my calculator? There it is. It's hiding behind my iPad. All right, you can do the summations again with your calculator. Under the math button, up arrow, option zero, summations, enter. So this is a check. I would, you need a variable there. Put anything you want, x, one, right arrow to 14, right arrow into the argument, put 2x, because that's the variable I chose squared, minus 3, hit enter, and it comes up with the sum for you. So just in case you made a mistake in one of these calculations, or sometimes people forget to subtract this number, whatever the case might be, you have the correct answer to double check that your answer is correct. Now remember, I'm going to be looking for all this substitution, this simplifying. They're all going to be part, the, part of the answer key. Because I'm going to ask to find or simplify the summation using the properties, which means I want to see that written out. All right, D. Now, here my n's a little smaller. So what I can possibly do here is simplify my formulas as I go. So... Break them into three summations for the three factors. Factor the three out of the second one. All right, now let's see over here. It was kind of tough to do the 14 times the two plus one, so I wanted to write that down. But here, I want to hopefully show you a shortcut. All right, so this is going to be six times the six plus one is seven, and then the two times six plus one is 13. Or what I like to use, once I know the 6, add a 1, make a 7, add these two together, 13. It's the same over here. 14, the 15, add those two together is your 29. Shortcut, all over 6, plus 3 times, now, 6 times 7 over 2, you already have those listed, it's right there. That's why I like that n times n plus 1. It's part of every one of my formulas, except the constant. That would be plus 30, or you can leave it as plus 6 times 5. If you can do the mental arithmetic, go ahead and do it. All right, we'll reduce the 6s. Reduce the 2 into 6. So let's see, 7 times 13, that's 91. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21, times 3 is 63, plus that 30. And we can add those all up together. Let's see, 9 plus 6 is 15. That's 18. That's 180. And 1 plus 3 is 4. And that's how we calculate out our summations.